Hello SGD, this video will be looking at polygonal complex masonry focusing on granite. So uh, this ancient site, not very much uh, covered, but you see these granite, red granite polygonal walls, modern restoration work done to preserve you know, this ancient site. Modern people, modern era didn't and couldn't do polygonal masonry. Uh, more different views, it's part of an uh, ancient fortress and there we see a side view again of the construction method. This isn't an ancient fortress, it's 1832-1854 in Aland Island in now in Finland territory, it was built by the Russians back in the day, 300 metres across. So comparing in size to Saxa Weimann in Peru. Uh, if you trace out the whole length of the perimeter wall is nearly 920 metres, you know, probably a little bit longer. However, Saxe Weimann has uh, multiple tiers. Bossamund just has one ring going around, but there are multiple rings in that famous site in Peru. And the attention is on focused on the north wall, on the northern section, but if you see the other sides, it's not quite as... It uh, doesn't have the giant stones there, and that they are only on the lower tier. So the, the famous section is on the north, the focus is on the lower tier, where along, especially on the corners, and every once in a while you do have a large stone. You'll often see them said to be 150 to 200 tons. I uh, went into depth in other videos, uh, and well, now I can revise that because I've got a better height. Of, as a gauge so this is the 150 ton block is 55 tons around that area and the corner block which is this is probably the heaviest or close to maybe that one that you can see there in the background there are about a hundred 102 tons again these are limestone they're on the lower tier and the quarry is uh, two kilometers away so one and a half mile type of region and that's uh, the quarry is again uphill and, a and not in a very close distance. These are not andesite, they're not granite, uh, these are limestone. But what about the middle and the upper tiers? So he's on the second tier and that stone is one of the uh, up, very impressive on the upper tier. We can get an idea from knowing his height, we can get the size. You have to take away, take away should take away more but just 10%. So we get a surface area, and if we look at the blocks above, and you can see in sections that are uh, have been pulled apart, the, the blocks here are more like slabs. They're quite thin in comparison to the rest of their size, and also oh, there's that grooved block as well. So it's directly behind uh, walls, section 15, I think it is. Um, but let's assume that this lower block is twice the thickness of those above. The wall sections that have collapsed, that is not uh, that we can see from behind, that is not. I'm being very generous by saying it's double the height, uh, sorry, double the thickness, and that would make it just uh, 0.9 cubic meters limestone, slightly heavier than granite, 2.7 ton per cubic meter. So we're looking at 2.3 metric tons. Being generous, we should put an asterisk in there. So <laughs> not really that heavy. Um, moving you know that type of weight you'll see plenty of videos with bored teenagers getting levers and rolling stones like this around uh, heavier ones and that so even without advanced compound pulley systems or anything like that moving a stone of 2.43 metric tons is just not an issue I, if you think it is well but you just you, you haven't seeing what kids can get up to when they, you know, when no one's looking or what people in just work sites um, you know do when they need to get it done especially in the olden days so it's about 2.43 metric tons now what about the other blocks now this in itself is a very rare for in Peru um, there are those larger ones but even the rest of the sites with the polygonal stones stones have actually been moved Often their bedrock is confused with blocks that have been moved, but this is on the heavier scale. But these other blocks above are basically the weight of a man. 
and so v, again these blocks are, are just you know if you think this is difficult to move you, you know go just go to a gym and watch what one person can do let alone what a couple of people with a stick and a bit of leverage can do and what's important is that blocks of this size are the the average of a defining size of what you'll see all over the other dry stone wall polygonal blocks in Peru. So often shown those really tight fitting blocks in Cusco. Again, you can see this. So these would be, uh, well, very, you know, less than the weight of a person. Nothing at all for really, really prim, you know, just by hand, not even with a lever stick uh, to move and manipulate these around. This is a defining size. This is like the, the the true average. When they say thousands and thousands, and they show a picture of the giant one at Saxawaiman, um, that's like saying, "Look, here's a top of the line Ferrari, and this defines what all cars are like." It's that's a very rare, very um, unusual in comparison to the standard. And then you even have polygonal stonework, and just to give a scale of the, you know, because those blocks in Cusco we just saw before they're essentially rectangular they're ashlar masonry um, but even the more unique multi-faced uh, polygonal work can you just you know you get an idea of the size um, in compared to the people these blocks are not heavy so just to do that tried and traditional method of putting the stone down uh, using some um, mud or the dust of the stone to find the high spot and file that down i'll put the links in the description where you see people doing much more complicated stonework using traditional methods and fitting these together if anyone's telling you that this requires some advanced technology sorry but you know not just theoretically but you can see actual masons working fitting shattered stones together which just makes this look rather trivial really uh, amazing work but the exaggeration that's all impossible and lost high technology can't be explained can't be replicated it just doesn't stand up to any sort of factual examination and then the megalith so it's always described as the megalithic era you know the, the megaliths the megalithic construction megalithic period this is just doesn't make sense because um it just made up so the iowa state soldiers monument just one for example the column capitals the bits above they're uh, 25 um, tons they're raised over 110 feet and they were raised in uh, 12 minutes using this type of framework it wasn't super advanced technology they might have brought in a steam engine which the, the horsepower could easily re be replaced by animals or humans on um, cap stands and that was to raise them so if, those giant blocks that sucks a one month again they're on ground level they never needed to be lifted there's a big difference between moving and raising a block than what it is to deadlift it off the ground don't be confused by that so that often gets uh, in the way of reality so that's a night no? it's actually this is granite as well all right so again if we go compare the rear of Bossamund fortress to when we can see those sections of Saxo Waiman that have uh, revealed what goes on behind. So very, very similar construction technique, very similar to, to dry stone wall technique. The fitting that they went to in Peru, very impressive, but the technique is not difficult or impossible, especially on the scale with thousands of people working over one or two centuries. It's The, the, you know, the scale is not feasible. Again, this just doesn't stand up. Uh, so then we go to the ultra complex camp you know, laser machine cnc required and so we have faces such as these 14 sided face uh, so, so 16 sided because you have the front and the back but again the back is uh, I'm not sure if these are freestanding walls so the back and the front would be both visible in that case they do dress both sides but usually it's a wall and the, the back side of the stone is just rough so 14 sides plus the back and the front, so 16 faces or 16 sides, 18 faces, including the back and the front. Well, what is the most, this is again, advanced, can't be rep replicated, therefore lost civilization, cataclysm, something, something, gobblicky tepi. All right, uh, Eddystone Lighthouse. Uh, Smeaton's Lighthouse, the original one, 1756. And 
this was dismantled and rebuilt because the rocks it was built on was failing. The lighthouse was just stood up the test of time. And then it was rebuilt on on land further in. And you can see the old steps, you know, reflective, it's not vitrified, it get, you know, stone gets worn down, polished up. Um, Douglas Lighthouse replaced it. This helipad and, and solar panels were added later. It was just a normal traditional lighthouse later, 1878 to um, 1881 that this was constructed. And it was con like the ones that I'm showing are the ones that are built on islets you know, out at sea, not on on the, on the shoreline. So low tide and high tide, they could only build, put these up when the tide was low, so you couldn't get more difficult working conditions if you tried. This one was you now the storms and that have hit, so you can see that's how it was, and you know, the, and I'll show you just the, the forces that these are able to, to withstand, but you see this very complex polygonal masonry and bits have been knocked off over time. Um, this early one, they used marble dowels for each layer to lock it in. Now there's a better idea of the plan of how these stones were fitted together. And so that central block has 20 sides to that. Not 14, not 16, but not 20. And that 14 and 16 sided ones, these are the very, very rare examples in Peru. This just Smeaton's has one of those on every level. So just, yes we can, and not only that, these are much better, and I'll show you why. All right, uh, so these, and it's not all a veneer wall or a freestanding wall, they're also built you know, as, a, as a circle. So they all had to fit and come in there together. There's no shortcuts with the rear of the stone being not dressed. You couldn't like be off by a little bit because it, the whole structure has to work. Uh, this is an example of the one in off the coast of France. But each wave that hits these lighthouses has the force of a giant earthquake. How many storms are there per year? How many years? Over 150 years these have been up. The amount of earthquakes that they've taken compared to the, the structures in Peru, again, is orders of magnitude differently. These are just more complex, more strong, and well, every aspect of it. So there's some diagrams. Can you see the plan, uh, the central plan of it? And as they built from the ground level, where they attached it to the bedrock and then built up. Also, they were designed so it's not just a simple cylinder, which would be difficult enough to get all these blocks fitting in. It's also designed to be tapered. So it, as it goes up, it gets thick at the bottom, tapers down, and then flares out at the top. Got the idea from the the original uh, Smeaton come up with that idea and he based it on oak trees and the strength that comes from trees and how they're able to withstand again massive forces and like each layer so the black is one and then each time they rotate it around and interlock it uh, to add the strength. Uh, also in the base there's polygonal masonry made of granite I must remind again so one of the as those giant waves hit the idea is flares out and the water gets pushed away from the flame because back in the day you know we didn't have electric lamps back then so Smeaton's compared this just with the Douglas lighthouse more complex dovetailing interlocking than Smeaton's and there we go like Bell Rock low tide this is how they had to build it um, then the tides rise and again you see this super complex polygonal masonry and again, now we get an idea, you know, just you know, the scale and the size of these particular blocks that they're using. Every side had to be fitted, just amazing work. They couldn't have, if the water gets in there and it's going to undermine the structure, so these things were just immaculately fitted together. So compare the stone of this size and then we look at a place such as Alante Tambo and the polygonal walls there, can you see the human scale compared to those blocks? Those blocks are 
veneer facing, they don't go back very far at all, as where these stones are very similar size to that and they go back and they're interlocking, not just on the front inch or two of the stone, but through the entirety in three dimensions. It's just the geometric fact that these are more complex than those in Peru. Uh, here's another example. Now these are it's again described as polygonal, but they, these are rectangular ashlar masonry. You'll find this type of rectangular blocks beautifully fitted. You know, virtually with with no, you, you can't get a you know a credit card or that type of thing. But you know, uh, insert a pin between the gap. This is there's so many examples of ashlar granite masonry as well as up. This is just normal. So this thing, oh, you can't get a um, how many stone buildings can well. <laughs> If you could get a credit card between them, then the stone would be floating. So it's, it's just, again, it's just silly sort of, yeah, of, if you can get something in there, then if there's air between the stones, then the stones aren't sitting on top of one another. All right, now I compare it to places like Tamba Mache, and you see the scale, and so, again, these stones, which are a defining standard size all across Peru, uh, just, it's the, the same, but again, they're veneer stones, when you see it's the front is built really well but the back is again not fitted in as where these are now you get to the really if that alone is enough we get to the really crazy now that the keystone dovetailed blocks such as wolf rock 1864 to 1869 and so now you get a that's a side view of the stone so they're each dovetailed so it's not just a 90 degrees it's, it's a dovetail joint it, has, you know, it slides into and in, interlocks with one another so there's a you know, computer model of what they look like and when you view them from the top as well and so each block is not just a block it's inter and circular so they have to include the tapering as it gets thinner and thinner towards the center back in the uh, late 19th century there was no you know fancy advanced um, people were still working doing their maths in their head and writing it on uh, you know, yeah ancient technology was still the way the industrial revolution had brought a few things like uh, steam engines that type of stuff but there was an advanced computer you know super you know precise widely available engineering you know, factories and that type of stuff it was all done by hand back in the day all right so here's fastnet same 1897 to 1904 and what's cool is that they have a sample piece of that stone and it was done by guys like this and so that stone again it, it has 22 faces on it Plus, it's curved around the, the blocks. Like not just get the front of it nicely fitted together and the back doesn't matter so much because we can wedge it up with stone and, and stuff. This is just off the scale compared to the most complex stuff that you'll find in Peru. I'm sorry, it's a geometric fact. All right, um, so that 16 sided, like you will see so many, oh, this impossible interrupt. We can't do this today. So it has 18 faces on it, but only really 16 of them are fitted. And these are like the rare example that they find here or there. Just one, um, These 22 faced block has lots and lots and lots of them just in one lighthouse. And again, done by stonemasons, you know, hand artisans making pieces such as this. So a lot of these lighthouses that again they're, they're built out to sea on you know really only at low tide could you e e do any construction and they're just all there's so so many of them and this is a just focusing on the lighthouses of this part of the world of course the argument is okay but they had steel i'll link the video in the description um steel or carbide tools do not equal precision for one thing so just because I have a steel tool, I'm not suddenly now ultra precise. This has nothing to do with precision. It's the skill of a stonemason that does it. Uh, links, 
I'll put that link in there. Using a, a stone pounder or a metal pounder, steel, it's exactly the same thing. Using a flint chisel and a steel chisel, it's exactly the same thing. You'd go for the steel, but the same thing can be achieved with a skilled mason. And so an unskilled mason with a carbide, even power tool, is not going to do anything that's lovely. But with a very primitive tool, a skilled mason is going to do lovely work. And it comes the issue of, ex of expense. So I'll put this link in. It was a cool video, Stonework of the Virgin Islands with Mike Haddock. So he was speaking of his soul timer. And they built this facade wall around a house. And, uh, and he just talks about the issue. An issue was of expense. And so him and another retired mason did this as a love job, um, you know, for fun. And he, they couldn't hire new masons because masons now were charging, instead of $3 an hour, it's now $50 an hour. They just aren't the number around anymore because it's just not a trade. It's, it's like um, wagon wheel makers. There used to be a lot of people making those you know, wood spoke, wood wagon wheels. Now there's only a handful of them around. The old trades are just dying out in that way. So it's expense, lack of ability of trained up people. And well, you went back 100 years, 150 years, there were a lot, a lot, a lot of masons um, going around. But it's just not the case anymore. And then a bit like dry stone bridges. So this is polygonal stonework. It's not perfectly fitted, that razor tight fit. But well, it is because it's just inside the crack a little bit, all the stones have to be touching. And if they're just touching on one or two points, they're going to wear down and then this thing will collapse because it's going to move around. So if you go to the extra effort of really fitting the stones well, and again, links where people do precision fits of much more complicated, the, they get shattered stones and put them together using traditional old methods. So again, even the dry stone walls, they're just not what, you know, we're living in a different world and these old world skills are going, you know, are going away. So again, well, interesting, you know, so we compare Fastnet and then you, well, you look at the size of Saxe Weimar and the, the giant stones, well, you put in a bit of perspective, now it's okay, now I start to get it. And these giant stones, again, are the very rare ones, and then when you get these smaller, the, the weights drop off so dramatically, and this is only on the lowest tier where you have these, and again, it's not a cube. It looks big on the face of it, but it's like a piece of paper. If you look at the piece of paper, well, it's, you know, 20 by 30 sort of centimetre, um, but if you turn it side on, well, it's barely visible and the same sort of principle goes with these stones. Looks big on the front, on the side, different story. And so you compare the... Cons these are fit really well on the exterior, the behind, not so nice, but those lighthouses are all the way in with more complicated shapes, including those dovetailed ones and the proofs in the pudding that they survive hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of earthquakes because every wave that comes in and the big storm is equal to a large earthquake and then you look at these ones they've had a few major earthquakes in the last few hundred years stood up beautifully too those of course but you can see the movement in there the lighthouses if they had that same movement they wouldn't be existing anymore so we do until recently did build with megaliths like in that um, Iowa State Memorial and lifted them without super advanced you know modern machinery lifted them that's the important part Saxo Waiman those big stones never need to be lifted they just had to be moved and then raised and so I said, well why don't we build in polygonal any anymore well we, we do <laughs> but the question would then be well why didn't the, the master ancient lost high technology race ever master building large open spaces flooded with light. All of their, it, they just had lintels, so they put up a couple posts and a stick, you know, or a big block across the top. But there are no open spaces with lots of light, you know, dark, small structures. We, and even now this is a dying art, for instance, Notre Dame Cathedral, they don't, you know, there just aren't enough traditional carpenters and masons going around to do that type, to do the restoration. It's the materials, we have to like dry the wood and stuff. So 
uh, but also just do you have a skill of it? And there's a few and far between that people do this type of work. And this is, again, this is not megalithic in scale because we've gone beyond megalithic. We've gone into floating vaulted ceilings. And I've got to say, we never, um, would you want a pyramid of piled stone with small little chambers in there? Or would you, would you be more, you know, if we face all this, they'd be freaking out. They say this is architecture and, and there, it's just on a different scale as well. So the weights of the stones, well, okay, but the design and ability, to, well, why didn't the lost ancient high technology people ever master arches and large open spaces? with stone root ceilings. This is just on a yeah, different sort of scale as well. So this is a context sort of video. So we do have, okay, these, as I've gone through it again, on the ground, never needed to be lifted, but then you see other places that have, and, and just that polygonal complexity of these shapes that went into those granite lighthouses built in the uh, 1800s. Technology had advanced, but so we were in the Industrial Revolution, but we weren't in the post-Industrial Revolution with these super advanced computing and high-powered diamond laser cutters and all that type of you know space age stuff. This was just done by you know, people working on pencil and paper and traditional craftsman skills without laser measures and yeah, all that type of um, modern stuff as well. So. Don't be as beautiful and amazing as the ancient stuff is, and it definitely is. We could, why not give uh, our great great grandfathers and what what they were doing in their period, especially in places such as the um, temple builders, uh, and especially with the vaulted ceilings um, of uh, cathedrals in in uh, Western Europe, were just above and beyond in terms of precision and skill and engineering and, and all these things so yeah as much as it is great the old stuff and well it's all, this is all old stuff but ancient versus the more modern period we we're still doing it um, and it's just if you see it in, in context the the sort of ancient aliens lost high technology thing uh, just doesn't uh, um, you know really stand up it's necessary for them not to to show that, to try and balance that their story with other facts it's they're all about I'm just asking questions but they they're not asking questions they're presenting a statement to you dressed up as a question they don't want the answers they don't want to show you the, the nuance the detail you know what the truth is behind the wall it's like that wizard of oz thing and it wants they don't want you to see behind the curtain that there's you know the wizard is not what you think it is it's important that you believe in this magical wizard because then they can sell you all of this other mystery that goes with it but credit to our ancestors because they did know a thing or two and especially these lighthouses as an example is just the uh, for nail in the coffin um, into this well we couldn't do it now it, if you hear it it's they, they're just making it up and even when they find a little bit better oh I should have even mentioned so we have, it's that um, 20 the central piece has 20 plus it has the core and then well, I forgot about this block 1, 2, 3 4, 5, 6, 7 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Well, that's about 20 as well. But crazy shapes, um, and they're able to do it, not just one or two layer on top, layer on layer, tapering it in to get that um, oak branch effect. And again, important point, if I show you one giant stone, you say, well, how did they do thousands of them? They didn't do thousands of them. The standard size for those blocks was, you know, one or two two people could manipulate those stones and say, so do that, put it, test it, take away a little bit, test it again. Again, that's just not an issue. 
uh, the big ones will get the smaller ones to fit around them and even those blocks um, two ton sounds like a lot but we've yeah a bit of lever you can see those youtube videos with kids mucking around and, and moving and manipulate them say so that's not an issue um, on its own and then you do have the giant blocks and i'll do a special one um, just on that i've done lots of videos about that but I'll, I'll make a compilation and bring them together where you see people moving these type of weights with primitive tech and manipulating them and positioning them perfectly as well so that with primitive technology not modern pulleys and all that just with old really really old pre-old school um, methods just not a problem to, uh, to do those it's just important that these mystery you know, the unexplainable type of stuff it sells really well but it's doing a disservice to humans it's, it's dumbing us down it's making a mockery of our ancestors and more importantly stealing the birthright of you and your children and their children that they can't do this yes they can don't let anyone tell you otherwise uh, with that cheers s3d and have a good one